graphene is an allotrope of carbon in the form of a two-dimensional atomic scale hexagonal lattice in which one atom forms each vertex. It is the basic structural element of other allotropes, including graphite, charcoal, carbon nanotubes and fullerenes. It can also be considered as an indefinitely large aromatic molecule, the limiting case of the family of flat polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Graphene has many extraordinary properties. It is about 100 times stronger than strongest steel with hypothetical thickness of 3.35 A which is equal to the thickness of graphene sheet. It conducts heat and electricity efficiently and is nearly transparent. Researchers have identified the bipolar transistor effect, ballistic transporter charges and large quantum oscillations in the material. Scientists have theorized about graphene for decades. It has likely been unknowingly produced in small quantities for centuries through the use of pencils and other similar applications of graphite. It was originally observed in electron microscopes in 1962, but not studied further. The material was later rediscovered, isolated and characterized in 2004 by André Geim and Konstantin Novoselov at the University of Manchester. Research was informed by existing theoretical descriptions of its composition, structure and properties. High-quality graphene proved to be surprisingly easy to isolate, making more research possible. This work resulted in the two winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010 for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material. Graphene, the global market for graphene is reported to have reached $9 million by 2014 with most sales in the semiconductor, electronics, battery energy and composites industries. Definition. Graphene is a combination of graphite and the suffixene, named by Hans Peter Bohm, who described single-layer carbon foils in 1962. The term graphene first appeared in 1987 to describe single sheets of graphite as a constituent of graphite intercalation compounds, conceptually a GIC is a crystalline salt of the intercalant and graphene. The term was also used in early descriptions of carbon nanotubes, as well as for epitaxial graphene and polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Graphene can be considered an infinite alternate polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon. The IUPAC Compendium of Technology states, Previously, descriptions such as graphite layers, carbon layers, or carbon sheets have been used for the term graphene. It is incorrect to use for a single layer a term which includes the term graphite, which would imply a three-dimensional structure. The term graphene should be used only when the reactions, structural relations or other properties of individual layers are discussed. Gaim defined isolated or freestanding graphene as graphene as a single atomic plane of graphite which, and this is essential, is sufficiently isolated from its environment to be considered freestanding. This definition is narrower than the IUPAC definition and refers to cloven, transferred, and suspended graphene. Other forms of graphene, such as graphene, grown on various metals, can become freestanding if, for example, suspended or transferred to silicon dioxide or silicon carbide. History in 1859 Benjamin Collins Brodie was aware of the highly lamellar structure of thermally reduced graphite oxide. The structure of graphite was solved in 1916 by the related method of powder diffraction. It was studied in detail by V. Cole Shutter and P. Henney in 1918, who also described the properties of graphite oxide paper. Its structure was determined from single crystal diffraction in 1924. The theory of graphene was first explored by P. R. Wallace in 1947 as a starting point for understanding the electronic properties of 3D graphite. The emergent massless Dirac equation was first pointed out by Gordon Walter Semenoff and David P. DiVincenzo and Eugene J. Meal. Semenoff emphasized the occurrence in a magnetic field of an electronic Landau level precisely at the Dirac point. This level is responsible for the anomalous integer quantum Hall effect. 
The earliest 10 images of Hewlett-Layer graphite were published by G. Ruiz and F. Vote in 1948. Later, single graphene layers were also observed directly by electron microscopy. Before 2004 intercalated graphite compounds were studied under a transmission electron microscope. Researchers occasionally observed thin graphitic flakes and possibly even individual layers. An early, detailed study on few-layer graphite dates to 1962. Starting in the 1970s single layers of graphite were grown epitaxially on top of other materials. This, epitaxial graphene, consists of a single atom-thick hexagonal lattice of sp2-bonded carbon atoms, as in freestanding graphene. However, there is significant charge transfer from the substrate to the epitaxial graphene, and, in some cases, hybridization between the d-orbitals of the substrate atoms and pi-orbitals of graphene, which significantly alters the electronic structure of epitaxial graphene. Single layers of graphite were also observed by transmission electron microscopy within bulk materials in particular inside soot obtained by chemical exfoliation. Initial attempts to make atomically thin graphitic films employed exfoliation techniques similar to the drawing method. Multi-layer samples down to 10 nanometers in thickness were obtained. Old papers were unearthed in which researchers tried to isolate graphene starting with intercalated compounds. These papers reported the observation of very thin graphitic fragments by transmission electron microscopy. Neither of the earlier observations was sufficient to spark the graphene gold rush, which awaited macroscopic samples of extracted atomic planes. One of the very first patents pertaining to the production of graphene was filed in October 2002 and granted in 2006 titled Nanoscaled Graphene Plates. This patent detailed one of the very first large-scale graphene production processes. They pulled graphene layers from graphite and transferred them onto thin CO2 on a silicon wafer in a process called either micromechanical cleavage or the scotch tape technique. The CO2 electrically isolated the graphene and weakly interacted with it, providing nearly charge-neutral graphene layers. The silicon beneath the CO2 could be used as a backgate electrode to vary the charge density in the graphene over a wide range. They may not have been the first to use this technique. US 6,667,100, filed in 2002, describes how to process commercially available flexible expanded graphite to achieve a graphite thickness of 0.00001 of an inch. The key to success was high throughput visual recognition of graphene on a properly chosen substrate, which provides a small but noticeable optical contrast. The cleavage technique led directly to the first observation of the anomalous quantum Hall effect in graphene, which provided direct evidence of graphene's theoretically predicted Berry's phase of massless Dirac fermions. The effect was reported by Gimes Group and by Philip Kim and Yuan Bojang, whose papers appeared in the same issue of Nature in 2005. Before these experiments other researchers looked for the quantum Hall effect and Dirac fermions in bulk graphite. Even though graphene on nickel and on silicon carbide have both existed in the laboratory for decades, Graphene mechanically exfoliated on CO2 provided the first proof of the Dirac Fermi on nature of electrons. Gaim and Novo's Love received several awards for their pioneering research on graphene, notably the 2010 Nobel Prize in Physics. Recently, several important techniques have been developed to prepare nanostructured graphene, e.g., graphene quantum dots. These techniques mainly include electron beam lithography, chemical synthesis, electrochemical preparation, graphene oxide reduction, C60 catalytic transformation, the microwave-assisted hydrothermal method, the soft template method 
the hydrothermal method, and the ultrasonic exfoliation method. In 2014 a £60 million National Graphene Institute a £60 million Graphene Engineering Innovation Center were announced to support applied research and development, in partnership with other research organizations and industry. In northeast England two commercial manufacturers, Applied Graphene Materials and Thomas Swan Limited, have begun manufacturing. In East Anglia, another manufacturer, FGV Cambridge Nanosystems, is operating a large-scale graphene powder production facilities.